Zoe, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, yes. It's nice to see you with a smile on your face because <laughs> last time we saw you, you were scrabbling around putting pills back in the pocket, back in, the, back in your bag <laughs> before getting a taxi to the subway to take you back to your little apartment. I know. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I know I do get, I do get sometimes notes from people that just say, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> Zoe, do you do you get recognised since season three came out? Because your hair is so distinct. I know. You, my how hair... has it been since season four? Yeah, my hair. I definitely look like I do on the show. So I, so I, uh, I, I, I do, I do sometimes. I, um, I, I recently. Um, I was telling you about the construction that that's outside on my. Yeah. Um, street and and the other day there was uh, this sound. It sounded like someone had just opened, uh, just un 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 released a, a fire hydrant and had just pointed it at my bedroom window. So it's like a thousand <laughs> aliens screaming into my bedroom window, and I oh my god! I thought, oh my, what is that? And so and so I went downstairs and. Uh, there were people from National Grid working on the street, and I said, "Hey guys, what? What did did you guys hear that? What was that?" And they said, "Oh yeah, no, no, we just we're just releasing pressure from the ground." And I was like, "Oh okay." And then they were like, "Zoe," and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, "One of the things we were talking about was like." It Everybody, regardless of their kind, of, I guess hierarchy in terms of in terms of parts on on certainly in this episode in this series of succession, the writing is just so beautifully crafted. Everybody has got some absolute doozies, and Kerry over the past two or three episodes <laughs> has just must have just been an absolute dream to kind of like as an actor kind of, to get your teeth into. Absolutely. Can we go back? To, I don't know how bored you are of talking about your no, audition. No. <laughs> but the the the, the showreel, the news reading showreel. Speaking as someone who worked in a newsroom for many years, was so painfully <laughs> on point. <laughs> it was it was hurtful to watch. Did you, question? Did you did you do a full? Was there was there? How much was on the cutting room floor? Please, please persuade Jesse to release the whole thing <laughs> as some kind tape. of. I feel as if if we were in the living in the land of the DVD, that would come out as a full extra. <laughs> right, yeah. right, right, right. Was, how did you how did you approach that? Because you must have spoken to some people who'd been burnt by that in the past. Yeah, well, I did. I you know I wanted to it to be Carrie's version of of an audition. I think you know for for her her perspective of it is that she thinks it's just a formality. She thinks she's just having to go through some necessary steps, so it seems like it's not a favor hire or a nepotism oh grab. God. So oh I think God. that Carrie heads into it thinking, this is mine, I'm going to do this chore because I don't want anyone to think that I'm, I'm being, you know, given anything because of, of my proximity to, to him. But I, so I think she heads into it thinking, yeah, I'll get this out of the way, but, but the job is mine. So, um... And I wanted her, I knew how, how much she was going to be humiliated and how much, much they were going to poke fun of her throughout. So I wanted her to really start on a high. So I wanted to go into that, into episode two, feeling like, you know, the deal is going to go through. We've carved out ATN. I've secured a spot as a news anchor. I'm going to have a voice. And, you know, the international stage is this seminal election, you know, um, comes into play and... So I just wanted to kind of build her up as much as possible so that the, the tear down would be all, would be all the worse. But, but so I think she heads into it thinking that it was, was hers. And as far as the uh, recording of it, yes, it was absolutely a full, um, a full audition tape. There was, there was one with just Carrie with a full script, and then there was actually Carrie on a panel with two other ATN hosts, you know, seeing, oh. seeing how she could, seeing how she played off of other people, which oh she, my you know. God. <laughs> uh, I'm going my, hot just thinking about it. <laughs> so my, um, my, my entryway around this audition tape, and, and Becky Martin directed it, and, and she is so much, so much fun. She's so brilliant and so funny and just so great to work with. So it was really just great fun to work on. And, 
My, my entryway of, of working on it was, I had a number of ideas, but I, and I watched some TV presenters, I watched some, you know, I wanted to go for this, you know, kind of, you know, they have this kind of like hysterical, you know, Fox News, you know, presentation approach. Um, but I, but I wanted it to be Carrie's version of it. And I think that, you know, one thing I've spoken about is I think that women in general have this pressure to have charm. And I think that's magnified on any sort of media presence. And, and I think that one thing that Carrie is not interested in, which is one of the few things I, I like about her, is that um, she's not interested in charm. I don't think she's interested mm. in having charm. I think she's hugely ambitious and, and driven and, uh, and she's not a people person and she doesn't care. Uh, so I think that uh, what we're seeing here is, you know, everything as it, everything in the picture is telling her to have charm, her hair, her, her, her pink dress, her just just the situation of appealing to an audience. And and so I think what we're seeing in this audition is Carrie wrestling with an idea of what charm might look like and failing at it. And I think that she's uncomfortable, but I don't think she knows how poorly she's doing. And I also think she just thinks it's something to get out of the way. And so she's, she's trying and she's uncomfortable, but she's not uh, processing or digesting in a sense that she might be losing the job. Um, and one thing, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a creature of the theater. And uh, one thing I, you know, in, in the seagull in, in the final act in Nina's act, she, she comes back and she talks about having tried to be an actress and, 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 and not, and failing and, and the, the, the pain of, of acting badly and knowing that you're acting badly. And, and one thing she says is uh, she didn't know what to do with her hands. And so I, I thought a lot about, I thought a lot about, so there was a lot of hand stuff that, that didn't make it in, but a lot of like, you know, like picking up just something and just moving it somewhere else without any explanation. <laughs> just what you're like, just how your body betrays the intense anxiety you're having, even if uh, within your language, you seem like you're on point and then your body is doing something to uh, reveal was, the inner terror. There was, a bit of, there was a bit of foreshadowing there because you laughed about death then as well. And then, then we saw right. like an absolute laugh about yeah, death. Yeah, that's, that's something that we played with too, this idea of not knowing what you're reading and so, mm. you know, smiling and then having the sudden awareness of what you just said and, and kind of trying to then immediately falsely go into a, a serious tone about, you know, that you've just smiled about some atrocious event. Zoe, could you tell us a bit, uh, so so um, sh you came into the show sort of in season two, I think it was episode seven. Yeah. Could you tell us a bit more about like the work you did to fill in the character and like, can you tell us a bit more about like what your, what the story is and, and was she always going to be like, did she always want to be in politics? Did she always want to be a newsreader? Can you tell us about like where you filled in the blanks and how you developed the character off the page? Yeah, I think that, um, I, I mean, I do a lot of, I do a lot of character building just on my own, just because I'm a bit obsessive and also because uh, I enjoy I enjoy developing the world of someone. But um, my it, when I auditioned for this for season two, what struck me the most was that she was joining this company in the height of a sexual misconduct scandal and mm -hmm. that they were heading into these congressional hearings around the Waystar Cruise scandals. And I thought, who joins? First of all, who joins this company at all? <laughs> yeah. And second of all, who joins the company at this state? And so I thought right from the outset that she had uh, terrifying politics. I thought that this is someone who uh, is, uh, yeah, leaning in, in an alt-right terrifying direction. And so that was one insight that I had. And then I also thought, um, you know, if I, uh, being an assistant, um, if I were, if I were to be an assistant, I think that the way I would approach it would be to do my job and then, and then get out of there and, and not really try to intersect with any of the goings on. And I, and I thought, well, what if we saw a different kind of assistant where somebody is interjecting themselves into the conversation or into the room where they aren't wanted or needed? And so I chose in the audition, I just had a short scene with um, Shiv around telling her something and I did it in a way where sh I had a point of view and where I let her know that I was team Logan and and mm. that's 
who I was aligned with. And so just kind of these little moments of like inserting yourself where, uh, where one shouldn't maybe, or where they think one shouldn't. So um, that's kind of how I came into season two. And, and so I kind of started building the world uh, around that, around um, mm. those two things and, and thinking about where she came from. And yeah, I have, yeah, I said, I, I told some, some interviewer that, um, that I, you know, I, I do have this monstrous um, word document on, you know, Carrie and Carrie's backstory, and it's like truly like 500 pages. And I, and in season three, I think it was like 400 pages. And and I was telling another castmate, and they're like, "Really? Like you don't even have any lines?" <laughs> wow. But she has in, such a presence, though. In a, in a, a sweet, in a sweet, playful, jesting way. Everyone yeah. on this show couldn't be couldn't be kinder truly yeah, yeah. but um but uh i thought that um i thought that yeah i wanted to build a world and i you know the way that it's there's so many cameras they're picking up everyone's reaction you have to be alive in these rooms mm -hmm. it's kind of like being in a play mm -hmm. um you're always being watched you're always and it's not just about being a good scene partner and being alive when someone else uh is is having the attention of of the room it's about that the way that they shoot this this show is there it's so much about reaction it's so duplicitous mm. and who's shooting a glance at someone else and who who are your allies and who are your enemies and what are your moments of betrayal and what are your moments of loyalty and they're catching all of that and so i wanted to make sure that even if i didn't have a lot of text that she was fully alive so that when the camera landed on her and in moments like that that she was in that room and that she was had a history and that she had a shared history with people at times and that she was a was a full person because uh that that reads that is that it is immediately yeah. uh tangible whether whether it's conscious or not whether someone um as a history or not. Mm. Who needs full 10 page monologues when you've got, it's not a fucking Shake Shack, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't be more pleased with, with the way this role has evolved. And, uh, and I was so pleased when I, when I didn't have as much text on the page, just to be a part of this yeah. incredible piece of work. I mean, it's, it, it's, it couldn't, it couldn't be a better job. It just, it just simply couldn't. Now, we don't know whether we've just witnessed Carrie's last moments on Succession. Right. We won't do the discourtesy of trying to get it because uh, HBO's laser sights are firmly on the back of my head. Trained all, on us. As they always are. <laughs> what I will ask you, though, is what was, the, what was the most fun to film? Because how you managed to keep a straight face with that, th there must be tons of corpsing of, like, Greg right. trying, to, Greg trying right. to sack you from being a newsreader and you just, like, right. not letting him off the hook. What was your, right. your favourite bit, bit to film? Gosh, they're all so, they're all so incredible. Um, I mean, this, this is not, I mean, I've had such great lines, so I feel bad because this isn't one of my favorite lines, but I will say a line that I spent a lot of time with was in season, in season three, I had a line that's, it's when the FBI comes downstairs and I had a line that's, what do they do at the front desk? And I spent like three hours on that line. I was like, what do they do at the front desk? Is it like, is it like, what are they, like, what are they supposed to do at the front mm. desk? Or is it like the FBI has already broken in? So it's like, what do they do at the front desk? Like, what are they even doing down there? Like, what is, and, or is, or, or, or is it, I spent hours and hours on this line of like, what do they do at the front? Like trying to figure out the meaning of like, what does she mean when she says, is she saying, because it didn't have, I don't think it had a question mark. I think it was, what do they right, do at the front okay. desk, period. So, so I really spent a lot of time with that. And then it aired and, and it, the camera was on someone else and softly in the background, you just heard, what do they do on the front desk? And I thought, oh, I'm so <laughs> <laughs> I gotta spend a little too much time on that line. <laughs> nice. But so many. I mean, it's just, and they also, there's so many amazing, you know, what's incredible about this show, the writing is so 
is so incredible. So there's so many darlings, obviously, that are cut. And they also have so many alt lines for everything, mm. like the, the string cheese line with with Greg, there was there was many there was many you know <laughs> final versions of like I'm fucking coming for you essentially you know so oh, yeah, yeah. so there was so many and you just they just hand you like two pages of you know here's some other options and you just see like the funniest two pages of like <laughs> twenty different lines and you know nineteen of them are never going to make it in oh, and maybe man. twenty of them if if something else happens so I mean. There, there is an endless wealth of talent in the writing of this show, as we all know, but it's, it's, it's really impactful to see it on a page. Here's all, the, here's all the other, you know, brilliant things we came up with, and, you know, try out, try out one of your favorites. And so, I, I mean, they're endless. They're endless. I mean, that string cheese line is great. <laughs> I, like in this, I like in this last episode... I'm not going to remember it exactly, but, but Carrie comes in and she's talking to Marsha and she says, it's written as, I want to go, dash. I have some things upstairs of mine that I need. And I always thought, I want to go, dash. I always thought she was going to say, I want to go to my room. But she yeah. knows she's staring yeah, at someone, yeah. she can't say that. So it's, I want to go, dash. I have some things Amazing. upstairs of mine, yeah. And do you, just quickly, do you believe Carrie when she says that she thought they were going to get married? Is that something that is is that something that come out of the hysteria of the moment, or is that something that she, that her and Logan talked about? I I think absolutely she had she had um, they had conversations about making a more formal agreement and mm, and, mm. and 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 legalizing things in a way that she could have security and and uh, be protected. I absolutely yeah. I don't think I think she is so undone that I don't think a lie could come out of her at that point. I think yeah. she is like scrabbling for to salvage any any part of her life that she knows is is quickly slipping away as this force field develops yeah. around her. I think that uh yeah, no, I think that that's I think that that's real. I think that's why she's trying to get upstairs along with, you know, jewelry or or um mementos that he's given throughout their courtship and mm. I think that um yeah, I think that she, I think she does, she does believe that. I think that's what's so painful about this scene for me is that in this circumstance, you know, we talked a lot about, uh, we didn't talk a lot about it, but it was mentioned around Marion Davies and, and Hearst and, and Marion Davies fall out of, of, of that yeah. death. And, but something that she had written to, to Charlie Chaplin's wife was in a letter was, um, like asking like what what does this relationship give to her and something she had said was um I, i'm going to paraphrase this but something along the lines of like feeling feeling a sense of worth and i think mm. what 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 we're seeing in this moment is carrie has come back trying to salvage some sense of worth what is my worth what is my value to him uh has he left something for me I, surely he must have have left something for me surely i must be of value i think that she's coming from uh, an insecurity and a brokenness within her own life where she doesn't have that for herself. So suddenly she's, she's gotten it from this very powerful person. And so she's come back um, trying to render some sense of value, some sense of worth. And, um, and what's so painful about this scene, I mean, there's many painful things, but that she doesn't get to publicly grieve. I think that mm -hmm. what this day is about is people communing. I mean, there's obviously other things going on. People are trying to figure out where they land and trying to align themselves. And But the face of what this public gathering is about, I think, is about uh, coming together to sit with uh, the absence of a, of a titan that has just passed and, and commune around that. And she doesn't get to do that. She doesn't get to publicly grieve. Marsha shows yeah. up. She gets to be the face of grief. That's mm. part of their arrangement. Yeah. You know, they're not divorced. You know, yeah. she's she's been given a hefty sum of of things that she wants so that that she'll uh, so that she'll carry on this public display of being united with Logan yeah. Marsha has and so she gets mm. to be the public display of grief whereas Carrie not only was hidden all along in some senses of their intimacy but now never will get to she has to go back to her tiny apartment and and grieve yeah. alone
Well, listen, whether whether that was her last moment or not, may, may Kerry forever be shopping in Milan. You know, I think <laughs> that would be the final. Her. That's that would be the final her. kind of like, fuck you, Marsha. I get to shop in Milan forever. <laughs> and I just uh, want her to get a new tote bag because yeah, that exactly. one broke <laughs> badly. Zoe, yeah, thank you made. so, so much for of bringing course. so much pleasure into oh, our lives. What a fantastic oh. show. What a dream part. And thank you so much for coming on. So we love Carrie really so much. It. I really appreciate Just... it. I Thank you so much for having me and for caring about you know her backstory and her language i really appreciate it it's such a you know it's it's so um it's not lost on me the rarity of getting to land in a show of this caliber of talent and with with these people everyone on this show is just couldn't be more fun and more spectacular to be with and and to work with and so i I just love talking about it one final thing just before you go. Yeah. Was Kendall's name underlined or crossed out? Yeah. That's Quick up reaction. To, and that's up to you. Ah. <laughs> we disagree. <laughs> oh, the two of you disagree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, who I think-, think underlined I think underlined Jamie thinks crossed out. Yeah. 100%. Oh wow. 100%. 100%. Oh wow. Uh, Zoe, oh, you're so good. You didn't give anything not away. Giving, not giving anything away. <laughs> Thank you, Zoe. Take Thank you. care. Thank you. Thank you so much. Cheers. Bye.